pours off. Uh, he's got two Sin Collectors, Desecration Demon, Blood Baron with Scopa, Bermaz, Obsidad, a slew of removal spells and Thoughtseize. Yeah, the, these sort of strategies are very powerful against opposing creature decks because you have just removal spells and awesome creatures. Yeah. You struggle a little bit more against control decks because your threats are not as good there. Yeah, the, the, the big thing that you're kind of missing here, too, is some card drawing. Sometimes we see versions that have Underworld Connections or a couple copies of Read the Bones, but, you know, you don't really have a great source. You are doing some really powerful things, though. Yes. So we see some temples from each player to get things started here. We're going to see some cards that we don't see a lot of, actually. Uh, you know, Bermaz from Carter's side. We've got Kiora from Kasari's side. Kiora, one of my favorite cards from the new set. Yeah, we've seen Kioras here and there in our Sandra Opens the last couple weeks. Not to any great success thus far, but certainly one of the most powerful, most hyped cards in Born of the Gods. So a Temple of Plenty there from Kasari as he does pass the turn back here is a Swamp. See what Carter has. It's a copy of Sin Collector. Again, there are two in his main deck. Kasari will lay his hand out, and there's a Dissolve in there, at least for the taking. You also see a Detention Sphere, a Supreme Verdict, and just a couple of lands. There's a Temple Guard, there's a Breeding Pool, a couple of islands over there for Kasari. Yeah, this is probably, these Sin Collectors are probably con a concession to the fact that his game one matchup against Blue Eye Control and Esper are going to be a bit of a struggle. Yeah. And he also has one main deck copy of Whip of Erebos, so that's a nice creature to get back with, with the Whip. Yeah, between that and Obsidad, he actually does have at least a game plan against, yeah. you know, a Blue White Sphinx's Revelation type deck. Uh, it's one that they've actually gotten pretty good at beating, but it's a game plan nonetheless, as there goes Dissolve via Sin Collector. Dissolve, very powerful, of course, against all of Justin's four and five mana spells. Kasari draws a Hollowed Fountain for the turn. So it's all about just hitting the land drops to start here for John as he does play a Temple Garden Pass before passing back over to Carter, who likely is going to deal first blood here in round five. Via that Sin Collector, Kasari goes down to 18. And it's possible Justin's actually setting up a path here for Obsidat Resolve, which I believe John's deck is really light on ways to actually answer once it's in play. Very, very soft, too. He does have... Um, I mean, he has Elspeth if Obsidat somehow is in play when Elspeth can actually take care of it. Same thing can be said about Detention Sphere. Uh, but yeah, even, even something as simple as like an Azori trying to reset it does not exist here. So it's very, very difficult for Kasari's deck to beat that card. And you can see the problem that Justin's going to have in this matchup right now is his hand is uh, a Desecration Demon that he does not want to cast into the face of the Supreme Bird he knows about. Multiple heroes down Vols, which of course have no targets in play yet for John and some lands, so really hard for him to, and he draws another removal spell, Mizium Mortars, very hard for him to apply sufficient pressure before something like Sphinx's Revelation takes the game over. Yeah, this is something that's gonna happen a lot, as you mentioned, in these kind of Revelation-type matchups, is he just doesn't have, you know, he, is he excuse me, he has a lot of removal. Yeah. Like, a bowl of removal, you mentioned Mortars, you got Dread Boar, he's got Hero's Downfall, um, Devour Flesh, just a ton of cards that don't have a lot of text in this matchup. Yeah. So now all he can do is really chip away here with Sin Collector. That's all he can really afford to do at this point in time. Yeah, or he can find some sort of discard spell like a Thoughtseize or another Sin Collector to perhaps get rid of the Supreme Verdict and open up a path for him to start playing his yeah. Desecration Demon and so forth. But for the time being, he is just going to have to attack and do very little else. Yeah, just going to chip away the entire time because that's all he can really it's all he can really do. Sorry, going to play a Hollow Fountain Tap past the turn back. Thankfully for Justin, Sorry's not really drawing much of anything right now. He's just drawing a lot of lands. Yeah. But this can all get blown up with Sphinx's Revelation off all, the top. All it takes is one. And then comes Carter once again, going to knock Kasari down to 12. And again, as you mentioned, he can't afford to play this Desecration Demon because he knows that Kasari has a Supreme Verdict in his hand, so there's no reason to allow himself to get two for one. Revelation, the draw there for Kasari. So you mentioned it, and here it is. Yeah. This is going to be, this is shaping up to be a tough game for Justin. And I, I assume that he is just a huge game one dog to a lot of strategies like this, as he does draw a Thoughtseize for the turn. Does Carter. And he's certainly going to lead out his turn with that. And Kasari, I think uh, I think Patrick will have a response. Yeah, this is going to be a, a red for four. Uh, really solid for John, of course. Justin's still going to be able to take the best card, but uh, card advantage critical for John. And even getting that life back matters, too. And you see, here's the hand. Elspeth, probably the best card that was drawn. There's a D-Sphere, a couple of lands, a Verdict. So two D-Spheres, two Verdicts, and it looks like just a bunch of lands. Some nice ones at that if you're into foils. Yeah. But still, you can see, you know, it's hard for Justin to create any sort of forward progress here. Yeah. The, even the Planeswalker is coming in for a return. You know, he, he has Hero's Downfall and Dreadboard in his hand and in his deck. Even the Planeswalkers, any of them, Elspeth, Kiora, uh, or Jace coming into play and using their card advantage power of ones is really obnoxious for Justin's deck. 
So you see, detention sphere is going to be the card taken via thoughts. So there's two verdicts over there, a sphere and an Elspeth among those lands. But, you know, this is the kind of the problem here, again, that Carter knows Kasari's hand, so can't really afford to play a Desecration Demon again. He just has to little, just chip away, for lack of a better term. And hope, just hope for some good draws. Yeah. And I'm sure Kasari knows that his opponent probably has something like a Hero's Downfall or a Dreadpoor in his hand, but he can still just get value from his Elspeth. Those three Soldier Tokens come up the ground enough that it's worth it. Yeah. And so you do see Kasari tapping six mana, and he will deploy Elspeth. And you also know now that Justin has Thought Season in his deck. Not that that's a hard thing to predict, but you also just don't want things sitting in your hand as well. And so there is a Hero's Downfall, which Kasari knew was going to happen. So there goes Elspeth, three soldiers in play, ready to, you know, battle that Sin Collector. Now, if Carter does have three red man among those lands, I believe he does, he could overload Mizium Mortars, which seems like a mediocre to be like, just like a very unexciting play, but it clears the road and lets him do what he's been doing. Yeah, at this point, he's just drawn Blood Baron, which is actually a threat that, depending on John's exact list, might be able to kind of steal a game. It wouldn't surprise me if he, at this point, was willing to say, I'm going to play the Desecration Demon and try to open up a path to, you know, John uses Supreme Verdict, maybe you can make him use his other Supreme Verdict somewhere else, and then Blood Baron might be able to steal the game. It's kind of, uh, got to kind of cross your fingers here if you're Carter, just because you do have so many dead draws in your hand right now take a look at his mana. It looks like he's only got two sources of red mana, the Blood Crypt and the Temple of Malice. So he's just going to deploy the Blood Baron right now. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Kasari does just use one of those two copies of Supreme Burke in his hand. Yeah. Clear all of this stuff up and just go back to step one as he will draw a card. And it's another copy of Supreme Burke. So that actually makes the decision even easier now. I felt like this is probably minor details as, as Justin's just kind of in some pretty general trouble right now. I felt like I would have led with the Desecration Demon there instead of the Blood Baron, because the only real path here is for Justin to land a threat that John just randomly doesn't have the right kind of answer to. Mm -hmm. You're aware of Detention Sphere, so instead of leading with Blood Baron, which induces Wrath, now you have Desecration Demon left over against his Detention Sphere. If you switch it, now all of a sudden you might have Blood Baron against his Detention Sphere, which he can't target, and you might have an opening. Yeah. Especially when you're kind of a when you're a dog in game one, you have to leverage you know those small windows that you do get. Yeah, it's going to be an uphill battle for Justin no matter what. But there is some low percentage chance that he can't answer a Blood Baron because mm -hmm. of the cards he's put in his deck or the cards he happens to draw. And there's a Kiora. So Kasari is going to use the second ability to explore. See a Corsair of Krufix the draw. Yeah, so Kasari playing, I believe, with uh, Sylvan Karyatid as well. So he mm -hmm. actually has a mana ramp into Planeswalker element to his deck as well. Yeah, he also can ramp into Plasm Capture, which allows him to ramp into large revelations, things of that nature. So this is a very, if you're familiar with John Kasari, this is a very John Kasari deck. He, I don't know what he's going to do when Sphinx's Revelation rotates out of standard. Yeah, me either. We might not see very much of this guy anymore. but just loves playing a control deck. He loves Bant, too. Yeah. I remember in Vegas, he got off to a great start at the invitation on day one before kind of crashing and burning on day two. Verdict's going to take care of the Desecration, even a little one-for-one -one action. Going to play land off of the Cure ability. Temple Garden kind of come into play tapped and pass the turn back. So does hit the two land drops before passing back to Carter. So a huge land advantage as Carter does draw a planes for the turn. And this is what I was talking about with the plane, the problem with the Planeswalkers. Justin has an answer to them, but Cure has already kind of done its damage by activating once. Yeah, if it gets to do any more, that's cool. But yeah, as you mentioned, just the fact that he gets to use it initially and then Carter has to take care of it afterward is right. just a big, big problem. So there's a Deso Demon. Just going to pass the turn back. Surprised he's not going to fire off something to take care of that Cure right now. Well, I believe he has Hero's Downfall still in hand, so he might be trying to just trap John a little bit here. Okay. See, Kasari drew an Elspeth for the turn. So he wants to deploy this this turn or not. So he can start by deploying Corsair if he'd like. Start really getting through his deck. So there is Corsair. Top card is a Temple of Mystery. Kasari will play that for his land. So that's going to come into play. He's going to go up to 15 from the Corsair trigger. Take a look at the top card. I think he's going to keep that. I imagine I imagine Swings' Revelation is uh, better than the average draw at this stage. <laughs> so I believe John is likely to keep that on top of his deck. I like to select to keep it 
as here is an Elspeth. Take up to five, three soldiers coming. And now here's a hero's downfall. Take care of the Elspeth. As far as win conditions go for John's deck, you know, you take a look at a control deck. How are they going to win the game? There is one Aetherling hiding out in here. Of course, you can deal some damage. Um, Elspeth is a three of. Two are already gone. And then Kiora is a two of Kasari's deck. But the ultimate on that can provide a win condition as well. So he's got plenty to get the job done. Yeah, and you may ask yourself, why are you playing Sullen Carotid and Corso Crufix alongside Supreme Verdict? And the answer is those are two marquee cards in terms of forcing beatdown decks to have to continue to play creatures. Mm -hmm. Corsair and Karyatid are so awesome at blocking, they actually force your opponent to play even further into Supreme Verdict. So it does look a little awkward on the surface, but Corsair does a lot of good work for John. The mana acceleration of Karyatid uh, is also very powerful for him. And in a subtle way, th those cards actually force his opponent to play further into Supreme Verdict. There's Dreadboar, and it's time for Cure to go. And Carter will just pass the turn back. So Kasari's going to draw that Sphinx's Revelation. Top card is a Dissolve. And that is, I, I'm not going to say that this is a lock, but this Rev and knowing that there's a hard counter coming is going to be really tough for Justin to beat. Yeah, I agree. It's got the answer. Does Kasari in Detention Sphere for that Desecration Demon, and you can just give the beat downs from there. And the, 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 the worst spot that you can be in against a player who has his all is they can pick and choose what's worth dissolving. Yeah. And that's the, that's the really hairy spot. So Hero's Downfall drawn here for Carter. He's got the Mizium Mortars, another mystery card hanging on there. It's actually a copy of Bermaz. It's another card that's really not going to do a ton. It's because Ari's going to sacrifice a soldier token to the old Desecration Demon. And as rough as this game is going, you can imagine how Justin Sick just wails on creature decks. Oh, yeah. Just infinite cheap removal and just all of the marquee creatures of the format, including Bermaz. I mean, that's even another, another just awesome threat that he has access to. But not really that awesome against a deck like John's. Here's a big rev. It's going to be for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It looks like for 10. So Dissolve is going to go to the hand. He's actually going to get to show all of these cards. So, hey, it'll help us here in the booth. Yeah. There's a Corsair. Looks like there's an Aetherling. A Detention Sphere. Another copy of Corsair, so that's 8, 9, and 10. Of course, all of these cards being shown because Corsair of Crewfix reveals the top card of your deck. Yeah, it goes the whole way through. This is why if you have a Corsair in play and you play a Scarland, your opponent actually gets to watch you make the whole decision, whether yeah. or not you leave it on top and what the card is. So Rev is going to resolve... Cards of relevance add to the Gripper, Aetherling, Plasm, Capture, and Dissolve. Mm -hmm. the, the, the additional Coursers don't really do a ton in this situation. because Kasari's got enough life, he's already got a Courser in play. And, you know, if he were to run into Supreme Bird, he'd probably just want to clear up this, up this board and then play Aetherling and go from yeah. there. Pretty, pretty no-fuss, no-muss sort of path to victory here. Yeah. And there is Supreme Bird on top. Called so. it. That's why they bring us here. Just You just know. Yeah. You do this enough, you just know how it works. Take a look at the Plasma Capture. Is Carter will do the same. It is one of my favorite cards that doesn't see enough play. It is Mana Drain, one of Magic's most powerful cards of all time, with two green added to the mana cost. Yes, it's very hard to cast, but it's uh, really powerful if you can cast it. Yeah. And the fact that it adds any combination of mana is sweet. It is sweet. And hey, it's got good art, too. You do not really know what it's a picture of. It's uh, an ooze doing something. I don't know. That's that's really good art depiction by you. Uh, <laughs> I didn't write the description, man. It's an ooze doing something. I think. <laughs> <laughs> not actually 100% on that one. I think Nicol Bolas is winning that fight, but I'm not sure. I'm, sure. Assuming, I'm assuming that is Nicol Bolas. Yeah. I didn't, you know, ask him for his ID or nothing, but... Yeah, I'd leave him alone. <laughs> He's going to attack here from Kasari. He's getting into the red zone. Jace is the card on top of his deck. Supreme Verdict was added to the grip. So it looks like damage is going to be dealt. Maybe there's a block, maybe there's not. Gain a life here, Will Kasari from the Courser. I wouldn't be surprised to see him just go Verdict. Could cast Aetherling if he wants to with plenty of mana up. Or he can just like discard some cards and other stuff. But he is going to cast Aetherling. Sensing the coast is pretty clear. He's got plenty of blue mana to leave up to be able to blink it in case anything goes wrong. He'll probably have to discard here, just to, just to guess. He did draw 10 yeah. or whatever <laughs> it was last turn, so it would stand to reason. Yeah, he'll discard a couple of lands. 
It's got Intense and Sphere, it's got Dissolve, got Plasm Capture, and you can comfortably pass the turn back, knowing that there's not too much that can go wrong for him. See, Elspeth was draw here, but as good as cards Elspeth is, Aetherling, greater than sign Elspeth. For sure. Essentially, when one person's playing with card drawing and counter spells, and the other person's playing with Heroes, Downfall, and Desecration Demon. Let this be a lesson to everyone at home. Sphinx of Revelation, powerful magic card. Let this be a lesson. If you want to play a control deck without Sphinx's Revelation, you're really likely to struggle against Sphinx's Revelation. Yeah. Yeah, that's typically how that works. As good as a card as Underworld Connections is, it does not stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Revelation. Yeah. And Justin isn't even playing with a card like that. I mean, he's a pure board control deck. Yeah, he's here to clean up on creatures. That's what yeah. his deck does. You see him going to cast an Elspeth here. And Kasari is just going to dissolve that. Yes. He, he knows that one blue is good enough to beat any removal spell. Right, he doesn't want to mana drain there as he's just, uh, well, still wants to leave mana up to protect his eighth healing. So I think he's going to come across here for eight. It's going to put Carter down to six. Kasari moving a little bit quicker now, sensing that this game is basically over. Doesn't have to do very much as Carter is on very, uh, very limited options to get himself out of the situation. Yeah, you, you look, it's just lands and creature removal spells. Yeah, that's his deck. Land, creature removal spells, and creatures. And, you know, he's got the two Elspeths. Here's an attack. Going to pump twice. Present lethal. And, like, here's a, here's a hero's downfall. That will get plasma captured. Or he's just going to blink it out. Sure. Yeah. Doesn't have to kill him this turn. Can do it next turn. Yeah, John's happy to run this turn back if yeah. that's, you know. Here's a Jace. It'll tick up. I do like taking it up in this situation, even though this seems minor because I wouldn't want to reveal any extra cards that my opponent could potentially sideboard against. So, Also, it's another path to victory in case something really weird happens with the safe link. Yeah. Don't want to play sloppy even though you're super far ahead. Yeah. And John would just have to discard most of the stuff he drew anyway because he's still at max hand size. Yeah. So Carter draws his card again. He's got a missing mortars hiding out over there. Here's a copy of Thoughtseize. And I actually like firing this off, even though he is dead. I, I would have actually fired that off to get a little information before heading to game two. Yeah, cast it. I mean, you know, the most likely scenario is that it gets hit with the, with the plasm capture, but there's some chance that John lets it resolve, and then you may gain some valuable information. Either way, John Kasari is going to win game number one here with his band control deck over Justin Carter playing black, white, red midrange. We'll go to the sideboards. You've got Carters in front of you. I'll let you begin. Two copies of Duress, two copies of Dark Betrayal, two Slaughter Games, two Revoke Existence, three Lifebane Zombies, and four Fiend Slayer Paladins. I would imagine that we're going to definitely see the copies of Duress and the copies of Slaughter Games come in, as that's actually a, a way for Justin to get uh, Sphinx's Revelation out of John's deck, and then they can actually kind of fight a fair fight. I, it wouldn't also surprise me to see Lifebane Zombie come in. You've seen Corsair Crucifix, and also... Justin just has a lot of dead weight in his deck. Just too many removal spells mm -hmm. and some threats that aren't really the best ones to, to show up with. So I would imagine he's going to be bringing in a bunch of cards just because he has a lot of inefficient stuff to get out of his deck. Take a look at Kasari's sideboard here. One Blind Obedience, not a surprise. Those are kind of the industry standard nowadays for these Revelation Control decks. Two copies of Pithy Needle, Revoke Existence, three copies of Miscutter Hydra, two Gainsay, three Archangel of Thunus, Lesnia Charm, and two copies of Aetherling. So he has the ability to side up to three of those, which is something we never see. Yeah, and the control matchups are often about, you know, the mirror matches are, are quite often about just who has the most stuff. Aetherling always warrants a counter, or else it's pretty close to game over. Mm -hmm. And just having more of them means you can be a little bit more liberal about running your Aetherling into a potential counter spell. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see him board in those two Aetherlings and then board out his Coursers or what have you, Sylvan Karyatids, whatever, uh, just to have three win conditions that he can draw pretty easily. Because as we saw in that game, Elspeth isn't going to play a huge role for Kasari. That's definitely not going to close the game out for him in this matchup. Yeah, Justin has, you know, between Heroes, Downfall, and, and Dreadboard, it's unrealistic that Elspeth's going to just go all the way. Now, the other cards in, in Kasari's sideboard, none of them are really all that exciting. I guess Blind Obedience is okay. Needle's okay. Uh, Rogue Existence, if you think your opponent has Underworld Connections, is okay. Uh, but there isn't anything crazy going on here. Um, I, w I just wouldn't be surprised if he just says, all right, two Aetherlings in, two Elspeths out, let's move on with life. Yeah, that seems like a, a pretty solid setup. Now, uh, Patrick, on the old Twitter sphere, uh, Miagor let us know that it's Niv Mizzet on Plasma Capture, not Nickel Bolas, which makes sense. Yeah, as he was one of the main drivers in the, the plot line of that block, I feel like. Yes, Niv yeah. Mizzet, Draco Genius. Or Dre no, I think it's Draco Genius. 
Draconius? <laughs> if only we had some way to look this up. Yeah, and put it on the screen for everyone at home so they could see it. Just there like was us. only some way. Yeah. <laughs> it's oh, there is Draco some... Genius. Yes. Yeah. You still got it. it. I knew it. He has no patience for minds that do not inspire him or explode by trying. Keep that in mind next time we get the artwork wrong. All right. On I Plasm will. Capture. Okay. Neither Niv Mizzet has been good. That's not. That's not cool. Uh, they were both the stones in draft. Well, yeah. They, were, they both, were both really good in draft. They were both fun beatable in draft. I understand that. But they're not good and constructed. We need to have a Niv Mizzet that's good. Six mana is a lot. But it is a lot of mana. We need a good yeah, Niv It's reasonable, you know? I, I don't think that, you know, every single card has to be pointed towards top tier play, but it's nice when the storyline characters uh, are, are constructed impactful Just get cards. Thump people. That's why every Jace is a 10 out of 10. Yeah, that's true. I'm tired of Jace being good. Yeah, this was, it's a little played out. What's the worst Jace? Five mana? Yeah. Still Memory adept. Still perfectly and fine. And that's still a very reasonable tournament level card. Yeah, it's like a good sideboard card. It was just yeah, saw plenty of play. Yeah. We need a bad Jace. I don't that's think that's ever going to happen. There might be one that's more, you know, casual play focus. I guess Memory Adept could be tipped by the bet. Mill Stoning, pretty popular in, in amongst casual players. So. Sure. If that's what the low power Jace looks like, then it's no it's no surprise what the high power ones look like. <laughs> Two both players looking at their opening hand here for game number two. It looks like we're both happy, happy. We are underway. Going to start things off with a Thought Seize. Hand for Kasari is a Detention Sphere. Looks like a bunch of lands there, too. And then a Sylvan Carry to it. That's it. Yeah, pretty soft hand here. And remember, Justin with access to slaughter games, so he can set up the information that he wants with these other discard spells, with his thought seizes and duresses, or just go straight for Sphinx's revelation. Because there are two temples, Temple of Plenty and Temple of Mystery, it's a thought seize proof hand. Yeah. Is that how that works? No. No, okay. Feels like that's how it should work. Well, there goes the D Sphere. So it's basically six lands. Sylvan Carry did five lands. Take a draw. Looks like a copy of Supreme Verdict. There's a Temple of Plenty from Kasari. Now, this is the, the, the type of matchup where having Sylvan Karyatid and Supreme Verdict in your deck is quite bad. I agree. Justin can induce a Supreme Verdict with a single threat. Yeah, I was a little bit surprised to see Sylvan Karyatid in Kasari's hand after sideboard, where I don't think this, I, I don't think he needs to accelerate. Like, I, I suppose acceleration is better when you're on the draw uh, in this matchup, but I don't think that he needs to accelerate and, and then just wrath away his own Sylvan Karyatids. Sure. I see Carter considering playing a Temple of Malice this turn. It looks like he has a slight colored mana issue. It doesn't look like he has white mana just yet. Take a little look, Skipu. He does have Sin Collector in his hand, so yeah, if he had white mana, I think he would have played it this turn. But he's going to leave that card on top. Well, he actually may want to wait for on the Sin Collector until John has a couple more draw steps to find a spell. Because yeah. he knows, based on that Thoughtseize, he knows that John's hand was just Lance and that carry to that for the fact, so he may actually be happy to wait a little while before casting that one. Sorry to really select your charm for the turn. It's a one of in his sideboard. Nice job at cleaning up the Desecration Demon. That's mostly what it's there for. He can also reasonably assume that Obsidian is a card that, that Justin has mm -hmm. access to. We mentioned that's a tough card for him to beat. It is so. rough, yeah. A lot of people don't look at Celestian Charm as a removal spell, but that's the role that it plays a lot for Kasari in these band builds. As there's a Godless Shrine off over the top there from Carter, he'll take two, go down to 16. He might be time to collect some sins. It is. So here's a hand. Celestian Charm, Supreme Verdict, Elspeth, an island, and a forest. And there was no hesitation out of Justin there before he, he got rid of that Celestian Charm. He's been, he's been a lot more deliberate with his uh, with his discard spells, and there he's just like, get that out of here, go. I don't know if he's got a plan where he's trying to set up Obsidad or something, but... So there's a Jace for Kasari. Going to be able to protect that nicely. The Sylvan Carry tip, and Jace will tick up. It's interesting use of Jace in this matchup because I think when you know your opponent has Dreadbore and Hero's Downfall in their deck, I think you just have to minus two it right away just to get something from it. Yeah, I, I understand the instinct here that, that John is. You know, he's just playing a slow matchup, try to bleed a value out of that Jace. But uh, between all the heroes' downfalls and dread boards you saw out of Justin's deck, it just strikes me as unlikely. I see Mutaball's going to get fired up here. So we're going into the red zone. 
Carter says, I'm going to attack you. So triggers from the Jace. It's going to be one damage that comes across from the Sin Collector. And then the Hero's Downfall is going to get fired off to take care of the Jace. Yeah, this speaks to what you were just talking about. John may be better served just Miasing. Although I guess in that world, he just loses his Jace uh, to the attackers the, the following turn. But Yeah, but at least you get something from it. Yeah. You know, here's Elspeth. best Soldier Token is going to come into play. You know, this also could be a situation where maybe he ups it because he knows his opponent has a removal spell for a Planeswalker, so as a result, the Jace baits out their removal spell, and then the Elspeth can just kind of take it home. Sure. Because there's no removal spell actually for the Elspeth. Which looks like it might actually be the case right now. Yeah, Justin's hand just looks to be lands and a Blood Baron, mm -hmm. so John may have opened up a path for this Elspeth to, to be a big deal. Temple and Alice, top card going to the bottom. Carter likely looking for an answer to Elspeth, as he's currently without one. Troubles are brewing. And he can't just throw this Blood Baron onto the table the way the board is composed right now because of Elspeth simply minusing the Blood Baron away. You see Mewalk gets fired up. You see the blocks there from Kasari, putting all his creatures in front of Carter's creatures and then passing the turn back. Yeah. We're going to stop the game because we believe Carter played a second land that turn. He played a Temple of Malice and a Muta Vault. Temple of Malice and Plains. And Plains, okay. So it was a pretty long and protracted turn. Car Justin's hands also just, you know, uh, just lands in a Blood Bear, and there's no edge being gotten here. Yeah. But the, t the turn just took a while. Yeah, so good catch there. Because he did play Temple of Malice, he scried. Right. And then he attacked with the Sin Collector and the Muta Vaults, and then he played a land after combat and passed the turn back. Yeah. So, got to make sure our game states are, uh, are correct. And you can see that he has two tapped lands for the two Muta Vault activations, and then a third tapped land, which means one of those temples had to come into play that turn. Yeah. You are correct. So, we back it up, we get everything in order, and then we'll continue to play momentarily here. As sorry, I did play a Courser of Crew Fix, revealing a Courser of Crew Fix, but we'll make sure that our game state is appropriate before we do continue. And two lands in one turn is a challenging thing to, to catch on camera uh, just because the turns are so long sometimes. And, uh, but fortunately there, we were able to, to point that one out. So we'll see. I don't know if there's a warning associated. I would assume there's at least a warning associated yeah. with this. Yeah, we'll see what ends up happening here. So we'll bring it back to us for a moment until we do figure out what exactly happens. Once we get a ruling, we'll let you guys know. But Cedric Phillips, Patrick Sullivan, Star City Games Open Series here in Los Angeles. We appreciate you guys joining us this weekend. We see John Kasari playing a band control deck. Something I know Brian Braun to win, Chris Van Meter, those guys tried for a little while. Basically, with just a blue-white deck splashing for Kiora. This version of the deck has more green spells, Sylvan Carriage, of course, your crew fix, some sideboard options. Any reason that Bant hasn't really picked up, you think? Well, uh, the incentives that you get from Black right now are really high. Uh, Thoughtseize is probably better in control mirror matches than anything that green gives you, even additional planeswalkers. You also get the flexibility of ultimate price or doomblade depending on the metagame. Okay. Whereas green is basically just giving you Kiora. So it, I'm not saying that it's impossible, but the metagame has to be in a very specific place for Kiora to outweigh the incentives that you're getting from all the black cards you have access to. Yeah, I'm still waiting for uh, I'm still waiting for somebody to figure out how to how to make Kiora great. And it was basically what we've seen here with like the red white burn deck, for example, it seems like it's taken a couple of months, but people have kind of tailored it to something that they like and now it's starting to win with the win last week in Seattle. We still haven't we haven't seen that with Kiora yet. Well, to me I think the key component with Kiora is Jace, because those cards play so well together. Of course, planeswalkers in tandem are kinda always gonna be good. Of course. But Jace is really, really good at fighting a bunch of small stuff. You know, mono red or mono white, they have a sea of two power creatures, you Jason plus it, and it's, it's a disaster for those decks. Mm -hmm. But Jace is not very good against one big thing. A Desecration Demon is kind of annoying for Jace. The reverse is true of Kiora. Kiora is really poorly suited to fighting a lot of little stuff, but very well suited to fighting one big thing. Mm -hmm. So those two cards in tandem actually cover each other's liabilities. Brandon, uh, and Please because they're both card advantage, Brandon, Planeswalkers, Carol. you know, Jace draws your cards, Kiora allows you to make more land drops, which is a nice thing to be doing. I mean, there's a lot of natural synergy between those, those two Planeswalkers. And I think uh, it's finding the right mixture or the right skeleton to go alongside those two cards to really make Kiora work. I wouldn't be surprised if the card that Kiora kind of needs with it is a Time Warp type effect, even if the card Time Warp itself 
you know, in combination with that, you've got Courser, you've got Planeswalkers, obviously, which work great with time work effects. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the, uh, that's maybe the card that's missing piece. I don't know if that's coming, obviously, but I don't, I don't know. I like, I like when there's a time warp in a format. Yeah, I think they're, they're, yeah, no, Time Warp is a cool card. It is very dangerous to print alongside Planeswalkers, yeah. is, the, is the issue. Oh, yeah. It's very, very scary, especially Planeswalkers are so much better now than they were at the beginning, too. Could you do something with Time Warp and Elspeth? Could you be in the market for that, possibly? I would be very interested in I could be in, I could be interested. I'd be very, very interested in that. It looks like we have recovered our game state. Oh, looks like we're going to do what we're going to do here, which is there's the Courser. Going to reveal the Courser, so everything has been unwound as it's supposed to. There's a Temple of Mystery. Trigger the Courser's life gain. Time to scry here for Kasari. Courser going to go to the bottom. Let's find out what's on top. It's a breeding pool. Uh, of course, Kasari does have that Elspeth in play, which he's trying to ride to victory right now. Carter does have two copies of Mutavault. Blood Baron in hand. There's three soldiers there from Elspeth. And Kasari just has to pass the turn back with not a lot of action, honestly. He's got the Elspeth and the tokens, but that's really about it. But Elspeth is, if you're going to have exactly one thing, Elspeth is not the worst thing to have. That is very true. See, Carter draws a Sin Collector for the turn. So he's going to lead off with this. Take a look, Skipu. There goes the Supreme Verdict that he knew about. So now Kasari's just playing off the top of his deck. And there's a Plains for Carter. Fire Grip Mutavolts in the situation does next to nothing. This one would get eaten alive by the course, or the other one probably just get blocked by the Sylvan Carriotate or double or triple blocked by the Soldier Token, so. All sorts of trouble. Yeah. So. Carter's just going to pass the turn back over to Kasari, who's going to draw the Breeding Pool that we know about. Top card is a Detention Sphere. Breeding Pool going to come into play. Course are going to gain a life. Kasari going to go up to 21. We know he's going to draw a D's for next turn, but Elspeth is going to tick up because that's the thing that's most important out here and threaten its ultimate next turn. Yeah, I think that Justin tried to, you know, sandbag the Blood Baron to, because he didn't want to just play into the face of Elspeth's minus, but now we're in a spot where Kasari could just go ultimate next turn. Mm -hmm. And then the ultimate plus an attacking would actually get the job done. Now, I'm not quite sure what Carter drew that to. We know about the Blood Baron. This is a slaughter game. Slaughter games. Benjamin and that one, unfortunately, for Carter, is going to do next to nothing. The game is not about what is John's hand, it is what John has in play. Mm -hmm. That's part of the reason I've just never been a big Slaughter Games fan. I think it can be good when you're supplementing it with a lot of other disruption. Sure, sure. You know, a one or two Slaughter Games as part of a big Duress and Thoughtseize package uh, could be good. I like it in Justin's deck, too, because... He kind of needs a, a card with a high ceiling to steal of the game because he's facing such an enormous deficit in this matchup. But uh, this is not the this is not the game where Slaughter Games is going to be at its peak. Well, Slaughter Games is going to be cast, and we'll find out exactly what Carter is naming here. Oh, there we go. Sphinx's Revelation. Not much of a surprise. So those are going to go bye bye. But unfortunately for Justin, I'm not sure that's going to matter. Well, here's the thing. It's possible. John will actually not ultimate Elspeth next turn because of the fear of Bile Blight. Okay. So that could buy Justin a little bit of time. If Kasari just goes for it, uh, then Justin dies, of course. But it's not 100% that, that John's going to do that. Not a card I considered. Forgot Bile Blight was something people could be doing, which does blow out an Elspeth ultimate. I mean, it's hard to imagine, you know, you're seeing this deck with red, white, dual lands and mutabolts. Uh, do you really want to stretch your mana for something like Bile Blight? Maybe John doesn't believe it, but if John feels like he has an enormous advantage in the spot, he might just err on the side of caution. Sure. The trap could be set. Yes. As it were. So Slaughtering Games will resolve. It typically is taking care of Sphinx's Revelations and its history and standard, which it has done yet again here. So Corsair is going to reveal an Aetherling. That's another problem entirely <laughs> for Justin. Yeah, right. Now this may compel John to go for it because even if Justin's last card in hand is Bile Play, you just go, okay, I'll play Aetherling with mana up and an Elspeth emblem in play. <laughs> Aetherling on top, then it reveals an Aetherling. It's going to move in with the Elspeth. There's the emblem. Attack with everybody, including the Courser. Course will have plus two, plus two, and flying as well. So this is going to be attack here for six and three is 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Sin Collector, you do not get to block. Neither does Mutavolt. 
Yeah, so those creatures are all are flying. You see the emblem there. They'll point that out to Justin. And that is going to do it. So John Kasari is going to win this match over Justin Carter. Two games to zero. Band Control is going to move on to four and one. Yeah, I think Justin's deck could have actually been a potentially sweet choice for this weekend, given how the metagame is moving into a more aggressive place and, and little creature decks are starting to come back. We've, we're seeing you know, some Red Devotion decks on camera as well.